Hey everybody, welcome to episode 86 of Eric's Trains. On the road again. Yep, we are on the road again over to Legacy Station in Lilburn, Georgia, which is the train store that I buy most of my O-Scale trains from. And as you might expect, I'm on the way over there to pick up the new Lionel Pincy S1 steam locomotive. Now, the first S1s began to arrive a couple weeks ago. Those were the Brunswick Green S1s. I ordered one of the Tuscan Red S1s, and those, for whatever reason, took a couple weeks longer to arrive. I'm not sure if anything else has arrived, but we'll find out when we get there. Now, I do have an announcement. I'm once again going to be having an open house this year that's free and open to the public. Last year's got canceled because of COVID, but this year it's on. The folks who organized the Piedmont Pilgrimage decided it was okay to have it this year. It's part of the Piedmont Pilgrimage, which is a tour of Atlanta and North Georgia area layouts. And every weekend in October and November, they have open houses for various layouts and they group them by geography so that when you visit one layout, there's other layouts in the area that you can visit as well. So my open house is going to be Sunday, November 21st from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Like I said, it's free and open to the public. For more information, including driving directions, you can check out the Piedmont Pilgrimage website at piedmontpilgrimage.com. Now, if you can't make it, I will have the webcams on and you can observe the webcams while the open house is going on, although it's not quite the same as being there in person. And just in case you don't know, the webcams are always on. They're not 24 seven, but they're on from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. Monday through Friday. And then they're on 12 p.m. to 2 a.m. on the weekends. And you can find my webcams on my site at ericstrains.com under the webcams tab or go to ericstrains.com slash webcams. So as I said in a previous video, I'm currently in the process of filming a really long video to celebrate 50,000 subscribers for my YouTube channel, which is right around the corner. In fact, that video will probably come out a little bit after I hit 50,000 subscribers. Now it's taking quite a while to make because there's going to be a lot of stuff in the video. For starters, there's going to be a full tour of the layout. There's also going to be some retrospective segments where I look at some older videos and talk about some highlights over the last 14 years. Now I feel really old. And I'll also be running some trains. And I'm also going to do a YouTube premiere, I think, so that I can do some Q&A and stuff while the video is premiering. So it should be a lot of fun. Now, filming the trains for the video, I'd like to film 50 locomotives for the video to celebrate 50,000 subscribers. I don't know if I'll have time to film 50 locomotives for the video, but I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm trying to film one to two locomotives per night, and it is quite time consuming because I don't wanna run the exact same rolling stock behind every locomotive. I wanna switch it up. So that means boxing up a lot of rolling stock and then unboxing new rolling stock. So like I said, it does take up a lot of time but it should be pretty cool. So whenever I run a bunch of trains in a video, inevitably people say, well, how come you didn't run this locomotive or that locomotive? And so I'm trying to mix it up to have a good variety of locomotives in the video that will please or try to please most people. You know, I'm gonna have fan favorites like the big boy, of course, but I also wanna have some more obscure locomotives because I like the more obscure stuff myself. So it should be a good mix. You know, you can't please all the people all of the time. You can please some of the people some of the time. So hopefully it'll please most people and have a good variety that most people will enjoy. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. It's gonna be quite a while until it's ready, probably at least a month until it's close to being done. But once it's out there, it should be a lot of fun to watch. I'm having a lot of fun making it. Anyway, we're about 10 minutes away from Legacy Station now. So as soon as we get there, we'll go inside and check out the new S1 as well as anything else that may have arrived. Okay, we're here, let's go inside. All right, so three new items have arrived. Obviously, the big news is the Pensy Tuscan Red S1, but I've also got two new diesels, both GP30s. There's a Sioux and a Chessy. And I'm also picking up my hard copies of the 2021 Volume 2 catalog, finally. So let's go ahead and unbox the S1 first, and I think we'll also unbox one of these GP30s while we're at it. All right, so it's got an OBS date of 33021. So brand new. Now I talked to Brian about the rumor that 
these had some sort of problem. And he said that that's not what he heard. He heard there was just simply a delay of some sort from the factory on some S1s, but there wasn't any big problem that had to be fixed. So there's the tag. Let's see if I can read this upside down. Pennsylvania Legacy PRR S1 number 6100 Tuscan Red Legacy and Bluetooth Control Legacy Rail Sounds Fan Driven Smoke Whistle Steam and 072 Minimum Curve. So if you've got 036 curves on your layout, sorry. Very heavy, reassuringly heavy. <laughs> If you notice I keep looking at the camera, that's because I'm trying to make sure that I've got it in frame, <laughs> that I've got the locomotive in frame. All right. Yeah, this thing's massive. Remember when I had my MTH S1, that thing was massive as well. Oh yeah, that is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Wow. That is incredible. Check out the tender. Wow, holy smokes. Look at that thing. Doesn't get any better than that. Wow. I keep saying wow, and that is a genuine first reaction. Wow. All right, let's get this on the track and try it out. Okay, so I'm gonna run this more when we get back to my layout, but I just wanted to start it up and run it for a moment. Now, it may say whistle steam on the box, but if you remember in the catalog, this has the pop-off valve steam effect, which continuously shoots steam out of these pop-off valves when it's activated. It'll activate automatically or manually if you want it to. And then it's also got these interchangeable nameplates, which I'll show you when we get back to my layout. Anyway, let's go ahead and start it up. See, there's the pop off steam, and it'll automatically shut off. Dispatcher, ready to roll. Can I pull? Over. Sit tight for a minute. We've got some traffic to clear first. Out. <laughs>
All right, now we'll unbox one of these GP30s real quick. These came out fairly quickly. I forget which catalog they were in. I'll check before I publish this video, but these shipped rather quickly. OBS date of 625-21. Sioux Legacy GP30 number 700. Legacy control, Bluetooth control, legacy rail sounds, fan-driven smoke, and 031 minimum curve. So unlike the S1, this one is friendly to layouts with tight curves. Here's the instructions. There it is. Looks great. Dispatcher, ready to roll. Can I pull? Over. Hold for track orders. Dispatcher out. I'm not going to hold for track orders. Very cool. And I'll be doing a review on this as well as the Chessie GP30 in the near future. All right, so now we're going to head back to my house and we'll check out the S1 proper on my layout. Although first I'm going to meet my son for barbecue. So see you in a minute. All right, here it is on my layout looking pretty darn good. So I'll start things off with a little bit of history on the S1 just to catch everybody up. So the Pensy S1 class steam locomotive was a single experimental duplex locomotive of the Pensy Railroad. It was designed to demonstrate the advantages of duplex drives that had been championed by Baldwin Chief Engineer Ralph P. Johnson. The S1 was completed on January 31st, 1939 at the Altoona shops and was numbered 6100. As I'm sure everybody knows by this point, the streamlined Art Deco styled shell of the locomotive was designed by Raymond Lowy. Of course, the S1 was famous for being on display at the 1939 World's Fair in New York, although at that time, instead of being lettered for the Pensy, it was lettered simply as American Railroads in order to better represent the United States Railroads as a whole to the rest of the world. Unfortunately, although the S1 was a gorgeous locomotive, it had several issues which limited its usefulness. So for one, it had a big problem with wheel slippage, and it also had a wheelbase that was too long for many of the rail line's curves. And so for this reason, no further S1 models were built, as focus shifted to the much smaller but more practical Class T1 in June of 1940. Despite its shortcomings, however, the S1 did rack up a good amount of mileage while in service, especially considering it was a test locomotive. And this was due in part to the fact that it was able to help pull a lot of wartime traffic all the way up until the end of World War II. Crews were said to like driving the S1 in part because its massive size would soak up bumps and surges resulting in a very smooth ride. The S1 was retired from service in 1946 and although preservation was discussed at that time, ultimately due to financial hardships at the Pensy, the S1 was scrapped in 1949, which is a shame. So now let's get back to Lionel's rendition of the S1. So Lionel offered this model in their 2020 Volume 2 catalog, and these were delivered, well, just a couple weeks ago here in the summer of 2021. 
They offered four different versions of the S1 in the catalog. Three of them were in the Brunswick green paint and one of them was in Tuscan red. Obviously, I got the Tuscan red. It's a fantasy paint scheme. This paint scheme did not exist in the real world, but I decided to get it just because it looked so cool in the catalog. And let me tell you, it looks even better in person. Now, as for the other three green S1s, Lionel painted up one in an as-delivered paint scheme. They did one in what's called a calendar paint scheme. And then they did one that emulates the S1 that was shown at the 1939 World's Fair that I mentioned a moment ago. And that one, rather than saying Pensy on it, it says American Railroads. Now, just a side note, if I was to end up getting a second S1 for my collection, I would go for the American Railroad's 1939 World's Fair version. One interesting thing about this model is that if you look at the box, you'll notice that it says made in Korea and not made in China. And to me, that's a good thing for a couple reasons. First of all, it's never a good idea to have all your eggs in one basket, i.e. making everything in China. And so it's nice to see Lionel branching out a bit and having some stuff made in Korea and Vietnam and so forth. And also, just for me personally, over the years, I've noticed that steam locomotives made in Korea tend to be, on the average, a little better quality than those made in China. That's not to say China doesn't make good stuff, but I've just noticed that Korea usually does a better job at it for whatever reason. That's just my opinion. I may be totally wrong, but that's just what I've observed personally over the years. So to me, having this thing made in Korea is good news. Anyway, let's go over some stats on this model, and some of these numbers are quite staggering. So the combined length of the engine and the tender is just over 30 35 inches. The combined weight of the engine and the tender is 18 pounds, two ounces. That is one heavy model. And that weight contributes to this model's incredible pulling power. When I tested it, this model had three pounds, 13 ounces of pulling power. That is a tremendous amount of pulling power for a single motored engine. I don't have all the data in front of me, so I don't know if this is the strongest engine I've ever reviewed. I seem to recall I reviewed one a long time ago that had just a little over four pounds pulling power, but this is pretty darn near the top, and what that means for you is that this model will pull pretty much anything you put behind it. Construction materials on this model are first rate. You've got sheet metal for the frames, die cast metal for the shells, the trucks, the truck side frames and the drivers, and then brass detail parts. And by the way, that die cast metal construction on the engine and the tender is why this model weighs so much. This model features all LED lighting. It's got two fan driven smoke units on board, one for the smokestack and one for that safety pop off valve effect that you saw earlier. On the inside, this model was driven by one large flywheel motor. It's got legacy command on board as well as legacy rail sounds and you've also got bluetooth on board as well just like pretty much every high-end o-scale locomotive that lionel is making right now there are five ways to operate this model the preferred method of course is to use lionel's legacy command system as that will give you access to all of this model's advanced features and functions you can also run this with lionel's older tmcc command system the Bluetooth connectivity gives you two additional ways to run this model. You can use the Lion Chief app on your smartphone or tablet, or you can use the Lion Chief Universal Remote if you have one of those. And then finally, you can run this engine conventionally with nothing more than a transformer and some track. All right, so now I wanna go in for a close-up just to show you some of the more interesting features on the S1. So earlier, I mentioned briefly that you can swap out this nameplate. Out of the box, the nameplate says Trailblazer, but there's an alternate nameplate in the box, and it's right here. And I'm not sure if you can read that, but it says the General. And you can put that there in its place. Now, it's not magnetic or anything. You'd have to remove that and then put this one on with a little bit of CA glue. But it's there if you want to do it. And while we're up here, let's take a moment to appreciate how incredible the front of this engine looks. You've got this awesome looking torpedo nose with this great Pensy logo up top. Nice Cyclops headlight, striping all over the place, brass detail parts, including a horn, got some nice steps. And then this piece right here on the pilot can be removed, and that reveals a scale coupler that swings down, as well as some air hoses and so forth. And if you want to double head the engine, well, you can swap out that scale coupler for a big, ugly looking O gauge coupler. And as you can see, it's a big, gangly looking thing. So I wouldn't recommend double heading this, but you can if you want to. One of my favorite spots on this model is right here under the cab. They've got these four see-through metal screens. It just looks incredible. 
Up on top and at the front, we've got this little screen part here. That is not the smokestack. The smokestack is back here. There's two of them, and they go down into that fan-driven smoke unit. And as always, to load smoke fluid into the smoke unit, you just pour smoke fluid directly down the stack. Either one. And then we've got that safety pop-off valve steam effect that you saw earlier. That emanates from right here, and to refill the smoke unit associated with that effect, you pop off this little piece right here, like so. And that reveals the smoke fill hole right there. Now there are two ways to get smoke fluid into that hole without making a giant mess. First of all, packaged with the engine when you buy it, you'll get a little funnel like this. And you can stick it in there. And then pour your smoke fluid in. Or, you can do what I do. I just use a needle point dispenser. And I don't have to use the funnel at all. And then when you're done, that little piece pops right back on. And the final close-up that I want to show you is of the cab interior, and wow, does that look great. And keep in mind that this is without that red firebox glow that activates once the engine is in operation. Here's a look at the underside of the locomotive, and the really impressive thing is that, you know, this locomotive produces 3 pounds, 13 ounces of pulling power, and yet it only has two traction tires on the last set of drivers. That is incredible. That shows what a difference weight makes in a locomotive's pulling power. And while we're at it, here's a look at the underside of a tender. We've got two pickup rollers. There are two speakers, one here and one under this truck. And then right here is the sensor for the Lionel LCS sensor track if you choose to use one. Oh, and by the way, for those of you who might be wondering what it looks like on the inside of one of these models, here's the inside of the locomotive. Pretty cool. And here's the inside of the tender. All right, the last thing we're going to do before we start this thing up is BFIMO, best feature in my opinion. Well, best feature is a no-brainer this time around. It's got to be that safety pop-off valve effect. Super cool. All right, we are ready to start this thing up. Now, I've got some Lionel Pensy passenger cars behind this. The color of the Pensy passenger cars does not match the engine, but we're not going to worry about that. You know why? Because it's a fantasy paint scheme on the engine. It doesn't matter. Anyway, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. This is the dispatcher. Get us set up running. The train will be ready at 1730. Over. Yes, sir. We'll fire her up. Out. So the pop-off steam effect will activate automatically, as I said before and will turn off after a certain amount of time, about 30 seconds, or when the engine gets to a speed of 24. You can also activate it manually by pressing the AUX3 key on your legacy remote, like so. There's that pop-off steam effect again.
All right, so there you have it, the Lionel Pincy S1. This was a fun video to make, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to pick one of these up for yourself, regardless of which paint scheme you get, the price is the same. The retail price is right at $1,600. Although, if you go through a good Lionel dealer, you should be able to get a bit of a discount off that retail price. And as always, if you're looking for a good Lionel dealer, try my favorite train store, which is Legacy Station. You can find them on the web at www legacystation.com or give them a call at 770-339-7780. If you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at patreon.com slash ericstrains. Patreon supporters get all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world, not only to me, but to the future of this channel. And finally, if you'd like to buy an Eric's Trains t-shirt or anything else I might be selling, check out the Eric's Trains online store at ericstrains.com slash store. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Up on top of the front, we've got this little screen right here. That is not the smokestack. The smokestack is back here with his hair. Is. <laughs> you lift off this little piece, like so, and then Chessie comes in and inspects what's going on. <laughs> you like that smoke effect? Yeah, I thought you did.